first safety precaution is to wear safety goggles. Make sure these fit snugly around your head. If you have long hair, tie that back as well. And if you're working with flammable or explosive materials, wear a face shield. Also, wear gloves to protect your hands. If you're performing experiments involving fumes or acids, make sure to do these under a fume hood. To heat a liquid, you need a test tube clamp, a test tube rack, a test tube with liquid in it, and a butane burner. First, turn on the butane burner and lower the heat so it's not too high. Take the test tube with the clamp and hold it above the flame. Make sure to point the test tube away from you so that any vapors don't go towards you. Also, gently shake the test tube to mix the liquid. This prevents part of the liquid from superheating and splattering out. Never heat a stoppered test tube. Also, don't immediately cool hot glassware as it could shatter. Turn off the butane burner and put the test tube back in the rack. Learning how to read a meniscus is a very important lab skill. You have to be at eye level to read one, and you always look for the bottom of the curvature. Sometimes it helps to put your finger behind it so that you can see the exact number better. In this case, it's about 8.59 or 8.6. To prepare a solution, first you need a balance, a weigh boat, a solid substance, and a scupula. Take the weigh boat and put it on the balance. Make sure to tear it, which is setting the balance to zero, so that you can accurately measure how much solid substance you're using. In this case, our solid is copper sulfate. Use the scupula to transfer your solid onto the weigh boat. Try not to spill any of the solid onto the actual balance, because then the measurement will be off. When you're done, record the amount and close the bottle. Next, you need a DI water squirt bottle, a volumetric flask, and your solid substance from the previous step. Add some water to the bottom of the volumetric flask, and then very carefully add the solid substance into the flask. Creasing the weigh boat beforehand can help ensure that none of it spills. If it does, you won't have the right amount of solid in your volumetric flask. Make sure to swirl the flask to dissolve all the solid substance, and also rinse the sides of the flask with DI water. Swirl constantly until all of the solid is dissolved. The most important part is filling up the volumetric flask to the etched line. This line is very precise and you want to make sure that the bottom of the meniscus is exactly at the etched line, just as shown. Here we have a centrifuge, micro centrifuge tubes, and a DI water squirt bottle. The first tube has a solution from which we want to get the precipitate, and the second one we're going to fill with water so that when we put the two tubes in the centrifuge, the machine will be symmetrical. Try to fill up the second micro centrifuge tube as close as you can to the volume of the first one. And when you place the tubes in the centrifuge machine, arrange them symmetrically. So if you have two, place them across from each other as shown. If you had three, you would still place them symmetrically. Now turn on the machine and let it run for a few seconds. If you hear a vibrating sound, that means the centrifuge isn't balanced and you should quickly turn it off and check to see what the problem is. After a couple seconds, turn it off and remove the two test tubes. You can clearly see that the precipitate has collected on the bottom and what's on top is known as the supernatant liquid. For a filtration, you need water, a ring stand, a sidearm Erlenmeyer, tubing, a filter adapter, a filter paper, a Buchner funnel, and your solution. First attach your tubing to the arm of the Erlenmeyer flask. Then place the filter adapter in the top of the flask and put the funnel on top of that. 
Now turn on the water. The adapter connected to the faucet will create suction and that will help the filtering process. Now place the filter paper into the funnel and squirt some water on it to make the filter paper adhere to the bottom of the funnel and to prevent any precipitate particles from seeping underneath and into the flask. Now take your solution from which you want to filter out the precipitate and slowly pour it into the center of the filter paper. Don't go too fast or some of the precipitate might get into the flask. Depending on the strength of the water flow, the suction from the faucet might be more or less. As a result, the filtrate can sometimes be murky and you might have to run it through the filter again. Rinse the filter paper with water periodically to push through any soluble substances trapped in the precipitate. Once you're done, turn off the water. You can see that what's collected on the filter paper is the dry precipitate. For cleaning, you need Alkanox, dirty glassware or bottles, and a brush. For each item that you want to clean, use just a dash of Alkanox and a little bit of water, just like soap. Be careful to not use too much Alkanox, otherwise it's going to be extremely soapy and can take a very long time to wash off. Also use a brush to ensure any residue has been washed off the inside of whatever you're cleaning. On a side note, never put Alkanox into a volumetric pipette as it is very difficult to get out and can damage the glassware. For cleaning a lab bench, use Simple Green. Just spray down the area and wipe it down with paper towels. Now just for some additional miscellaneous precautions. First, pour liquids over a sink just in case of spills. Add acid to water to prevent splattering. Rinse a burette with the titrant solution so you don't dilute it. And obviously, no food or drink in the 